We are very happy to be speaking to you. I am Fieldon Allison, and we are here together with my wife, Janet Allison. We've been married since 1969, and we have five grown children. We came to minister in Africa in 1972 and have continued to live here up to today. In 1984, we began a ministry to help families in Africa. For many years, we have traveled to many African countries teaching marriage workshops and seminars. We've written four books about marriage issues. Janet's master's degree is in marriage and family therapy. My own master's degree is in Bible and related subjects. This series of lessons is being recorded to help you answer some questions you may have about your own marriage or family. We do not have all the answers. We teach these lessons with humility because we know that we also have troubles in our own marriage. Just a few. We've had to work through several issues in our lives. The question that we want to answer today is about polygamy. Is polygamy a sin? Well, this is a very important question. I have wrestled with this question since we first came to Africa. I have prayed much about it and studied it carefully with other people. I cannot say that I have the last answer for this question. Sometimes I even wonder if God gives us the final answer to all our questions. Maybe He wants us to struggle for the answer. In my study about polygamy in the Bible, I do not believe that God has given us a definite answer. That is why people still struggle with the question. If God does not give us a final, definite answer about it, then perhaps He wants us to struggle with the problem so that our faith grows. In all things, we only want to be pleasing to Him and to Him alone. So let us look at the question about polygamy with fresh, open eyes to try to see what God desires. One thing that seems very obvious to me is that when God made man— which we read about in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, he only made one wife for Adam. He first made the man Adam, and then he made the woman Eve to be Adam's wife. But then he told them in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28 to be fruitful and fill the earth with people. Why didn't God give Adam many wives so he could fill the earth with people more quickly? And again, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24, we read these words, A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. Again, as God described what marriage is, we notice that one man was joined to his one wife. Again, we can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 and 2, where it says that because there is so much sexual sin in the world, Every man should have his own wife, and every woman should have her own husband. Again, the Bible text shows that one man should be married to one wife. From those scriptures you have read, it's obvious that God's plan for marriage was that one man was to have only one wife. That is God's desire for every home. But before we rush to take that teaching and teach it to others without further thought about it, Let us dig deeper into the Bible for better understanding. Did you know that in the Old Testament there are many references which prove that there were many men whom God chose who had more than one wife? Mm -hmm. Perhaps a quick study about some of these men will help us have a better understanding. For example, Abraham is mentioned in Genesis chapter 16, Jacob in Genesis 29 and 30, and David in 1 Samuel. God used those men in his kingdom even though they had more than one wife. How could that have happened? We've already seen that in the beginning God made one man and gave him one wife. But now we see that God also used the leaders who had more than one wife. They were polygamists, but God used them in his kingdom. Abraham was the father of the nation of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And with his many wives, he gave birth to twelve sons who became the twelve tribes of Israel. David was called a man after God's own heart. If it was a sin for a man to have more than one wife, then how did or why did God bless those men who had many wives? Well, these are hard questions. 
The Jewish leaders often asked Jesus some hard questions, such as the question found in Matthew chapter 19, verses 7 through 9. They said unto him, Why then did Moses command to give a bill of divorce and put his wife away? He said to them, Moses, for your hardness of heart, allowed you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been that way. And I say to you, whoever shall put away his wife except for fornication and shall marry another commits adultery. And he that marries her when she is put away commits adultery. Jesus had been talking about marriage and why a man should not divorce his wife. These men asked Jesus about why God permitted the Jewish men to divorce their wives. Jesus told them that from the very beginning, God did not permit divorce, but because the Jewish men's hearts were very hard, then Moses allowed them to divorce. We can say the same thing about polygamy, that it was not God's plan from the beginning that a man should marry more than one wife but that God allowed Abraham, Jacob, and David to marry more wives because their hearts were also hard. Jesus said Moses allowed divorce because their hearts were hard, but Jesus brought a more perfect way. In his kingdom, he wants us to be more mature and to learn how to live with our wives, to respect and love them instead of being hard-hearted like the ancient Jewish men were. Yeah, that's all very true, Fielden. But look at all the heartaches that those men had because they married many wives. God had promised Abraham that he would have a son. When Abraham was very old, he still did not have a son. Then Abraham followed his wife's suggestion that he take a second wife, Hagar, because she, Sarah, could not have children. His second wife had a son named Ishmael. But God told him that the promise was that Sarah would have a son. Later, Sarah did have a son, Isaac. That led to Abraham's two wives quarreling and fighting with each other until Sarah demanded that Abraham send Hagar away with her son. We read this story in Genesis chapters 16 through 21. That conflict between Abraham's two wives and their sons started the age-old war between Ishmael and his descendants, the Arab nation, and Isaac's descendants, the Jewish nation. So Abraham's decision to marry a second wife caused him much grief and struggles and much trouble in his home. Jacob's story was not any better than Abraham's story. You may remember that Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, But on the day of the wedding, he was deceived and he married her sister Leah. Genesis chapter 29. In those days, the bride would wear a heavy veil over her face, so Jacob was not able to see who he was marrying. Rachel's father, Laban, promised Jacob that if he would work for seven more years, then he could marry Rachel also. That's exactly what he did. Later we learn that he took at least two more wives in addition to those. Find that in Genesis chapter 30. Because Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah, he treated her and her children in a special way. This made the sons of the other wives very jealous. These sons lied to their father and sold one of the sons of Rachel, who was Joseph, into slavery. Again, we see that polygamy was the big cause of the problems in Jacob's home. We can see a pattern of behavior in polygamous homes. From people I have talked to who are from homes where their father had more than one wife or where the man had multiple wives, I have learned that trouble is a constant problem. I remember one time when we were walking to a church on a Sunday morning and we passed a home where six houses were burning. When we inquired about it, we learned that the father had had two wives and he treated one wife better than the other. When the father died, the sons of the house that was not treated well killed one of the sons of the other household. Those sons then burned the houses of the other family. It seems that hatred, jealousy, lack of love, and even terrible acts often happen in polygamous families. But what can you tell us about David? Well, David was chosen especially by God 
to be the king of Israel. He was called a man after God's own heart. He loved God very much, but apparently, like many men today, he also loved many women. That lust caused him much grief in his life. We can count in Scripture that he married at least eight women. Some of those wives he treated very badly. The women were jealous of one another and of their husband David. In one case, David saw a woman bathing and took her and slept with her. When he learned that she was pregnant, he had her husband killed in battle. But when David came to his spiritual senses, he repented with tears before God. God used David for great work as the leader of Israel. Why would God use a polygamist for his work when it seems very clear that God's plan and desire in marriage is that one man should have only one wife? I think the problem of polygamy goes much deeper than just having more than one wife. It shows an attitude that a man has. A man who wants more than one wife is not willing to dedicate himself or be committed to that one wife. He is not willing to take the time and effort it requires to have a good marriage with his first wife. Instead, when troubles come into the marriage, he immediately thinks about getting a wife who will not give him so much trouble. Or perhaps he is just thinking about himself. He wants the sexual pleasure of many women without making a strong commitment. I agree with you fully. Marriage always has problems. There's not a marriage on this earth that does not have trouble or problems in it. Your marriage has problems. So does my marriage have problems. A polygamist thinks that having a new wife will take away his problems. But as we discussed before, every polygamist simply increases his problems by having more than one wife. I heard one group of people say that a man with two wives has two problems. So I guess a man with three wives has three problems? Even though there are problems that have to be handled in marriage, it is better to work on the problems with one wife than with many. There was a man I knew who married a wife. After a while, he became dissatisfied with that wife and her problems. He looked for a good wife, and he married a second wife. She also gave him problems, so he looked for a third wife. When she began to give him problems, he asked other men to choose a good, perfect wife for him. Well, now he has four wives and he can't live with any of them because he never learned to face his problems and handle them with his first wife. Exactly. Adam and Eve, the very first people on the earth, had problems. Just imagine what discussions they had when Eve ate the fruit and then tempted Adam to eat it also. Or when Cain killed his brother Abel, what troubles they had in their family. When they were taken out of the Garden of Eden and they had to work to live and Eve ha had to have pain in childbirth, they must have had many marriage problems about who did what work or about not having supper ready on time or sexual issues. They must have blamed each other for their difficult situations. They were people just like we are, and people have problems. But we learn to work through problems and find solutions. That makes me think about why men want to have more than one wife. Number one, as we've already discussed, a man may think that a new wife will take away his problems. Number two, I think that one of the main reasons is that a man wants to have sex often, and he feels unfulfilled with just one wife. We might say a man has a lust for sex and he lets it control him. Number three, perhaps a man's wife is not able to have children or she only has girl babies. Because of the strong demand in Africa for a man to have his bloodline and his name carried on, the husband may be tempted to take another wife in order to have sons. A fourth reason is a man may have more work than he thinks he can do with just one wife and so he marries another wife to get more labor. Number five, sometimes a man receives much pressure from family members to take another wife for some or all of the reasons mentioned above. Number six, 
Another reason is that a man's wife becomes sick or if she reaches the age when she can no longer have children, which we call menopause, he may decide to marry another wife. Well, Janet, are any of these reasons good, valid reasons for a man to take another wife? What do you think? If a husband and a wife have a good talking relationship that is built on loving and serving one another, then their sex life will always be good and adequate for both of them. Also, it's not a wife's fault if she cannot have children. There are some men who are not capable of getting their wives pregnant. Neither is to blame for that physical fault. There are many cases mentioned in the Bible where a wife could not have children. There is the story of Hannah, who prayed to God, and he gave her a son and other children later. And we read about this in 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2. Rachel could not have children, but again God blessed her to have two sons. We read about this in Genesis chapters 29 and 30 and then in 35. Elizabeth gave birth to John after many years of not being able to have a baby in Luke chapter 1. We mentioned the story of Abraham and Sarah who could not have a son. God also blessed her to have a son, Isaac. God knows our problems, and when we ask him, he can bless us. But even if we don't have physical children, we can use our lives to bless others like Hannah did in Luke chapter 2. Taking another wife does not mean that a man will have children or a son, and a man is not thinking clearly if he thinks that marrying a second wife will help him have additional labor. Truly, his new wife and even her children will help with the work, but she will also bring more needs to the family for clothes, school fees, and medicine. So the gain of laborers is taken away by the heavy cost of supporting two families. A man thinks that because his wife is sick, he has the right to marry another wife. But what about if the man becomes sick? Can his wife marry another husband? <laughs> Good question. I think that God meant it when he said a man should marry one wife. A husband is taught by Scripture that his responsibility in the home is to love his wife. We read that in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23 to 31 and in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 19. And the old evangelist Peter, who had a wife and children and knew all about the troubles and needs of a family, said that a man needs to study his wife so that he can understand her. We read that in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Men, your wives are different from you. They have different thoughts, different emotions, different needs than you have. The best way to get along with your wife is not to beat her until she obeys you. That approach causes hate and dishonesty. But your wife will love you if you learn to understand her, understand her needs, and try to meet those needs. If you're serious about your relationship to your wife, then sincerely ask her to write on a paper five things that she needs you to do for her. If you do that, you must be willing to not only hear those five things, but to begin to do them. For example, she may say that she wants you to put off the TV, turn off your cell phone, and talk to her for 30 minutes every day. When you do that, not only will you hear what is in her heart, but she will see that you really love her enough to take 30 minutes with her every day. The answer is not to take another wife hoping she will understand you. The answer for your marriage is to take the time with your only wife to let her know how special she is and to express your love for her, for her. Love and attention works wonders in a marriage. Well, I think we have learned that God does not want a man to have many wives. God wants husbands to talk to their wives and solve whatever problems there are and then go on with the marriage. Is polygamy a sin? It certainly is not what God planned for marriage from the beginning of time. Polygamy brings trouble and quarreling and hatred. A loving marriage with two people sharing together brings more of what God wants in marriage. Relationship, understanding, stronger love, more fulfillment, and more happiness. 
If this lesson has caused you to think of more questions, please write to us at AIMFRadio at gmail.com and we will read your questions and try to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you.